original French polishes were actually done just with wax. Waxing on and waxing off, and that was a French polish. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to French polish with a two pound cut of shellac. Two pounds of shellac to one gallon of alcohol is a two pound cut. Three phases to French polishing, and this is all in your handouts as well. Phase one is to fill the pores. We're going to use a real diffused poured wood so it's not too hard. I want to graduate up to mahogany and walnuts. They take a little more time consuming. Oaks, you might as well do the oak filler over there, brush on some shellac and start patting. So I've got some bird's eye maple here. Phase one is have our materials. So I need, I need some sort of um, non-curing oil. I like to use non-curing oil. Some like to use other oils. I like to use a non-curing oil. So this is mineral oil. Uh, lemon oil would be fine because it's the same thing. We've got uh, our shellac ready to go. That's a two pound cut. Just in case I need it, I got some alcohol, denatured alcohol. It takes denatured alcohol to make shellac, so it's natural to be there. This is called a pounce bag. Inside of it is some 4F pumice. And it's meant to be an abrasive material so that that's going to help scratch my wood. I'm going to keep this clean <clears throat> inside the rag. And so you need something in the inside to hold on to the shellac, some cloth, cotton, wool, more of this rag. It almost doesn't matter. But we just want to make sure that gets put inside and forms our French polishing rag. So what I think I'll do is get this kind of ready for when I need it. I'm going to get some shellac in there. Put it back in the jar. As long as it's an airtight jar, that can evaporate. It's going to stay nice and soft for weeks. Airtight container glass is really good for that. There's as many ways to French polish as there are people French polishing. I'll show you the way I was taught by George Frank. A little bit of oil. Rub it in. This is going to lubricate the wood so my pad doesn't get so sticky. It's also going to go into the wood and accent the color. <clears throat> A little bit of oil in the wood, not too much. I won't have any faulty adhesion. The oil will just become part of the shellac. <clears throat> Pounce bag, not too much. Squeeze the shellac forward. I don't want too much shellac too fast. The pumice is going to grind against the wood to make some sawdust, to mix with the shellac, to create a filler. The wetter this pad is, the lighter the, light the squeeze and, and, and light the push. Right now, I'm not pushing that very hard, and um, I'm hearing some scratching going on. That's the pumice on the wood. And now, from my angle right here, I can start to see a sheen build up a little bit. And I'm squeezing pretty hard, and I'm pushing rather hard and I don't hear any more grinding sound. That's my cue that I'm squeezing this so hard and I can't hear anything happening. It's time for me to loosen this up. Apply some more shellac, not too much. Squeeze it forward. More pumice, light touch, and I hear that scratchy sound again. So it's important for me to develop a rhythm here so that I know that I'm attempting to touch every square inch of this piece of wood uniformly. I'll do a pendulum motion. If I see any circular marks left by the shellac, 
that I don't like, I'm going to start doing a French pad here. So just this pendulum motion is going to straighten out any sort of those circular marks that I have and help me get near the edges and the corners. Once that layer of the shellac starts to build, and I'm no longer hitting the wood, I'm going to quit using the pumice. I'm starting to get that build now. So now I'm going to do a couple things. I'm, my rag is starting to stick, which means I've got a, a finished build up. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply some more shellac there put the oil on my thumb and put the oil right where I want the rag to hit. I don't, I don't like pouring it in or squirting it in. It's too much oil. You just get your thumb wet, put it on the pad. Yeah, can you see the, the cloud? Can you see the, watch, watch the cloud that appears and watch this I'll call it a comet tail. It's like right behind my stroke is this, this flash of oil and alcohol. That's what you're looking for. The cloud with a tail is good. That means you're French polishing. A cloud with no tail is just oil. Okay, it's already dry to the touch, it's dust proof already. Some more shellac, move it around, oil placed where I want it, start with the pendulum motion. If I go slow enough, can you see that evaporative tail? Anybody see it? If not, then we'll just have to have you come up here. See what's shiny and dull? Yeah. The dull is the cloud. Oh, okay. So in between the two. Right. Okay. So this cloud with a tail is French polishing. Mm -hmm. So I'm building a finish with every swirl that I make. Clouds with tails mean you're French polishing. Clouds with no tails means it's just oil. If you're not getting either of those, then it's going to feel sticky, and you don't want sticky. The balancing act is to go, I don't know how much shellac I want to need. Oil place where the rag touches. So there's a jewelry box, that's all the shellac this thing would need. I can take a jewelry box this far and never dip a brush or get a spray gun going and it's already dust proof and all I have is a rag and I don't need a $27 brush or $300 spray gun to put on a good finish, I can just rag it on. This is one of those deals where I've worked this board about as long as I want to or can do because what happens next is this shellac is trying to set up and I keep nailing it with more alcohol and shellac, and it goes, wait a minute here. And if I keep loading it up, you'll see, um, if you're going in straight lines, you'll see what appears to be like brush marks. And, and the term for this is now called roping. It's roping on you. And, and it looks like brush marks. And you're trying to pat them out, and all you're doing is burying them. So it's time to quit. Follow me? So roping is a... a French polishing defect when you start seeing lines from your rag because you're putting too much shellac on or you're trying to work it too long. So this is one of those things you can work for about 20 minutes, half an hour, then you got to go do something else and come back to it and work it. Okay? You can't work with it for three hours in a row, which just, you just make things worse. At some particular point, you come back to it and it says, I don't know, that looks, that looks good enough for my jewelry box. And you come back the next day and it's still that shiny. And we're just going to take a little steel wool and some wax, and you're done.